Right guys, well, I just received a box in the mail from uh, Jerry uh, at uh, VW Cabriolet Owners Group um, and uh, left this little note for me. Andrew, please remove green film, replace regular bulbs with black light LEDs, paint all needles, sorry, all needles, repair odometer, and perhaps install a new clock without black around the edges. Uh, thank you. So, what is he talking about? He's talking about this bad boy. This is an instrument cluster for a late 80s. We can get this open without hurting the film on the back. Late 80s, 1980s or so. Um, Volkswagen Cabriolet. If you didn't, couldn't tell already, yeah. There might be more of the Cabriolet related videos on this channel. So let's see what we can do for Jerry. Oh, let's see. Make this open. These things are pretty fragile. One layer. All right, looks like we got all the layers now. We packed it quite well. It's a good sign. Here we are. All right. Oh yeah, I see the black around the edges there of the clock. That usually happens when the, uh, the crystal in there, the LCD, uh, breaks. And. Um, Apparently the odometer's broken. Yeah, though that's a pretty common thing with these guys. Oh yeah, and he needs a new voltage regulator also. Alright. Shouldn't be an issue. I have a couple of spares of this unit. And uh, I can pull parts from those in order to fix this one up. So, let's get started I guess. In order to fix the odometer, we're going to get the back of it off. I'll grab a screwdriver here. Well, that's the wrong kind of screwdriver. We need one of these. Phillips head screwdriver. So we got one nut here. A screw with a hex head on it. And I got one right here. Now he was telling me that for some for whatever reason the tachometer uh, and some of the other gauges weren't working right in this one either. I'll check with him though to confirm that. It's probably going to be a multi-part series due to all the work that I'm going to be doing on this. I'm hoping that camera up there is focusing for me consistently. So, this is pretty tied down, so we're going to need to move this. And I've done this before for my own. There we go. Move this out of the way. And I think I need to take out these two as well. Just to get enough clearance for this thing to come out. stamp on this. So I can have one. Usually they have a sticker on it somewhere. It doesn't look like it has a date stamp. Let's take this bulb out, twist, and remove. That looks oh nice. It's already got a uh, removable bulb base in it. Good. And what about these ones up top? These ones are the originals. This can be a real pain sometimes. I'm going to get a set of pliers for this. Yeah, 
these are the ones that are not replaceable. Bulbs. Well, they are, but not without replacing the holder as well. This one sounds tired. Right, so there's our bulbs out of the way. This one off. Be gentle with this one. These are hard to replace. They should break. This should just come off now. Ah, oh yes, this is actually plugged in here. So, on the other side of this row of little crimps. There's actually a connector that slides into the top of the speedometer here. I don't know if you can see that. It's right, right in there, you've got your connector that pops into the speedometer. So let's see if we can get that out. And it's coming. There we go. So there's our speedometer connector disconnected, and this should just pull back, lift this side up a bit, and out she comes. So that's just the speedometer side. So the odometer, you've got little gears, a little red gear, a little worm gear, and on the other side you got this steel gear that's what usually fails or it starts to let loose and it no longer causes the uh, odometer to work so causes the odometer to fail um, this mechanism is pretty awesome we'll set this aside I'm going to see if I can take a look at the traces on this and find out why he said some of his gauges weren't working see anything obvious, obvious, well obviously there's missing the voltage regulator here, but he borrowed that for another cluster, so, mm. well, we're going to be doing the entire clock assembly, so why don't we just remove the rest of this. There's your empty um, housing, and we'll set that aside out of the way, and this is what the rest of it looks like on the inside. So you can see, yeah, that clock is definitely busted, um, and everything else looks okay though. I'm going to have a tricky time painting all these needles orange, just got to be careful with them I guess. Fragile. We'll use uh, probably use model glue for it. I'm hoping it'll end up with a good finish. Um, I was thinking I might be able to airbrush them, but now seeing how fragile that is, maybe I can get a piece of paper underneath there and still airbrush it. Yeah, I should be able to do that. Protect everything else, mask it, get a piece of paper in there, and go who took town on it. That might work. This is removable. This is also, well, it'll eventually be removed. And I can probably do the same thing with that, too. Um, well, there we go. So, how do I get this clock out, then? I have this other screwdriver here. I think it's going to be, in this case, just as simple as removing 
the clock itself from here. I think this should work. Just ever so slightly a larger screwdriver than I should be using, but that's okay. should just pull out, I would imagine. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so we're going to set this assembly aside. So this is the clock assembly. Uh, it looks like uh, this can be replaced as a hole, which is what I will be doing um, in this case because I'm not going to bother disassembling this any further than it already is. However, one thing that's going to happen uh, when we replace the LEDs, or sorry, replace the uh, little lights on this thing with replacements, we got this little bulb holder that sits sort of behind here, and what it does is it takes light from this bulb and it kind of channels it through these little uh, plastic, I guess they're called light tubes sort of the same concept uh, and then it projects it behind the actual um, display so I can emulate this with a flashlight this was a little bright turn it down so if we put this behind here and shine it sideways at this you can see it starts to light up behind do it on both sides it starts to light up better so this is approximately where the bulb will sit and that's how it kind of gets an even color to it. Now people have decided that they want to make you know, create some gradients and stuff like that that they end up putting behind there to even out the light. I'm not going to be able to do that. I don't have uh, the tools. Well I, I have a printer to do that but uh, I'm thinking this is going to look okay without that done up. So this is the junk one anyway. So we'll just set this aside. I got a lot of things set aside on this, don't I? So uh, we're gonna tackle this probably in a separate video. All I have to do on this is the gauges, uh, the gauge needles. He wants them orange. So uh, I will that over here. Now this this is the tricky one. Uh, not so much tricky, it's just tedious. Uh, it looks like it did, in fact, have a date code on it at one point, but that's too worn away to really see. So the first thing I do when I start to work with one of these is I gently bring this needle up and over the peg here and just let it sort of hang out wherever it wants to end up and I'm going to reinstall it in exactly that same position when I'm done with it. So let me actually go get a piece of tape. Oh, I have one right here. This is not the greatest tape dispenser, but it's what I've got. So what I do is I line it up. Yeah, this stinks. Line it up. with the mark on the face here where the, the, the needle ends up just kind of hanging out when you move it like that. So now I can reinstall it back at that same position when I'm done uh, having the faceplate off. Now, getting this off is very nerve-wracking because there's a chance you could break it. So I'm going to try not to do that. I've done it before on others, unfortunately, but I'll uh, try not to do that here. Um, sometimes you can just grab it and pop it off. Other times you have to be a little bit more forceful. Oh, this is 
is not going to be that nice to work with. So I'm going to use what's actually a non-marring tool. Same tool, believe it or not, that they use at the Apple Store. It's called the Black Stick there. Um, just basically a nylon tool that's not going to mar any surfaces. I don't know if this is going to work either. I have to be a little bit more forceful with it. I don't want to use these pliers on it just yet. Let's try it one more time by hand. I didn't like the sound of that. I might need to reach under there with these pliers that I don't want to use. I'm going to scratch the surface of the gauge there if I do that. Let me look through my tools here and see what I've got. There we go. Didn't mar anything. Like I said, that was nerve wracking, but I got it off. So there's our speedometer needle. That will set aside for painting. Now we can take the uh, faceplate off, or the actual gauge face off. This I am definitely going to swap out screwdrivers for. Jerry, I'll clean this before I put it back on, make sure I don't have any nasty fingerprints up there for you. So here is our odometer assembly now, um, and speedometer assembly, just without the needle. So, we're going to have to find out which of these gears is actually slipping to prevent this from working, and uh, I might be able to check Jerry see if it's just the trip odometer that's not working or if it's everything that's not working. So if it's just the trip odometer that might be it right there. I think it's this metal gear. That shouldn't be able to spin freely. Not without this red gear moving. Sorry, bud, I'm actually increasing your mileage on here. Or decreasing. I guess that wouldn't be too bad for you, huh? So this metal gear is supposed to be connected, and it is not um, attached to the shaft right now. Over time, the forces that be, whether it be vibrations or heat and cooling cycles or just plain old wear and tear will cause this metal gear to start slipping on its shaft where the red gear is supposed to drive it. Sometimes it's the red gear, like I've said before, that actually splits in half and then it doesn't work anymore or it's the, the metal gear which is actually easier to fix. So I'm going to have to take this apart. Uh, actually take it this assembly out. It comes out separately from everything here. Let's get on with that then.
Okay guys, I'm back with one camera and uh, it looks like I'm going to have to use some tricks here in order to make this work. This is just a standard little, I think a 13 millimeter nut. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to wedge this in here up against that uh, face of the bracket, the clear bracket here so that it supports it as I'm hammering on it. That way it doesn't crack. Now I've had a little bit of luck with this already. So we got it lined up. I'm just going to set it over here. I don't know if you can see this. I have it up against the face of the vise. Looks like we're getting somewhere with it. Yeah, we're getting somewhere with it, that's for sure. Okay, we're getting it to go in now. Okay. I think couple more taps and we're in. Okay, that sounds like we hit the nut. So that's fine, but it still can go in a little further than that. There's a pushing on this side that keeps it, uh, it indicates it's, it's bottom. So. As long as I'm gentle with it, it should go through. Looks like it did. Okay, and I gotta pull this gear out a little bit since this one got tapped. Good time to ensure that the mileage is correct. Don't believe it changed. I'll refer back to the photo that I took before disassembling this all. 169062. Alright, we are correct. With zero on the trip. So, this is what happens when. Uh, when the, uh, the speedometer is actually turning, it basically actuates this, actuates these gears, and they go through one by one, flipping it. You know how it works. It's an odometer. So we'll go back to zero six two. There we go. And zero on the trip. Okay. Push this gear back on. Now this is what we want. Before this metal gear was able to turn without this red gear turning. Now we have it uh, set up, uh, we have reattached it to the axle in such a way that the red gear cannot turn separately from the silver gear and we have a fixed odometer now. So this is done, inside at least. I gotta put it back together. I had already put the uh, screws back in place just to support it and that was while the cameras were off. We're gonna put our buzzer board back on. Make sure that these pins line up in these grooves up here. Everything else seats nicely. Just start on this side I guess. There we go. Yep, we're lined up. Clip it back into place. One clip, two clips, three clips, and four clips. Let's clip back into place. Now we can put this guy on.
You don't like grubby fingerprints. So if I don't do that now, they will forever be there on his dashboard behind the plastic, which is, you know, not really nice. I'm actually going to hold off on putting the speedometer back into place because I still have to paint the needle, or sorry, speedometer needle. I have to hold off on putting that back into place. I still have to paint it. So the speedometer is reassembled with a, a fixed odometer. So that part is done. Now I'm going to take a break. Uh, probably come back at this another day. Um, and uh, maybe I'll separate this into a different video. So stay tuned for part two. If you like the video, uh, hit like. If you didn't like it, hit dislike. Uh, and if you want to see more, want to see how this finishes, hit subscribe. And uh, until next time.